you see all these people with Bugattis, but it's giving this message that I am rich, I'm successful, and I made it without school. Uh, you've done the same route, but you don't have the Bugatti. Just because you're dropping out of college and you are um, making a lot of money today doesn't mean you're successful. So I do consider myself happy, but do I consider myself successful? No, tomorrow if my business shuts down, if tomorrow for some reason content does not make the same type of money it's making for me today, I'm back to square one. But you don't have a Bugatti. Isn't that concerning? That is extremely concerning. <laughs> sure is the best. You think so? Yeah, there's, I mean... I mean, they, they are trending. No, since I've gotten into the field of recording and creating, like, especially podcast mm. content, this beats all of them. Yeah. Or at least in ease of use. I don't know if there's better, for sure there's better equipment, but for a daily user, sure does the, the job. Perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, SM7B. Yeah. The, these microphones. I mean, they were they were famous, and they became so famous in uh, in, in podcasting. Yeah, uh, and now they introduced a new uh, microphone. It's called Sure SMDB. Never didn't see it yet. Yeah, or something like that. I'm not sure, but they added the letter to it. Yeah. Uh, which is actually they have uh, um, like a booster inside the mm. microphone because this microphone needs a lot of boost a lot of uh, it's picking up low volume and, and you have to edit the audio later on otherwise it needs a, it needs um, a, like a mixer that yeah. can uh, put extra phantom power they call yeah. it uh, which is it's, a, it's called the cloud lifter yeah and uh, so it doesn't need this one this okay. piece so it comes with the an extra got it <laughs> it got just it. makes it stronger or or better yeah after we bought this now they introduced the new new one i mean i started using the mobile as a microphone when i was doing the content in the beginning i didn't pay that much attention but as you film you realize how much of a difference it makes yeah if they understand your content through your audio it makes a huge difference if the mic is good if the mic is not good background noise the echo the disturbance, the small disturbance, you so you get obsessed basically. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's a de it's a debate, you know, because sometimes um, the content that's done really in a very very raw and raw and amateurish way, yeah. it gets more uh, reach, and yes. it, it's a problem that all production houses and all advertising agencies faced. Yeah. Is like how we can compete with this. I mean, it's uh, really literally considered rubbish uh, 10 years ago. Now it's going viral. So that was the gap where I actually jumped in um, three years ago and started this agency with my partner, Majdi, uh, K9 Unit. We saw that, so I was working in a media company before, we saw that there is a gap in the market where you can make a video which has WhatsApp quality and it can get 7 million views. And there's no formula behind it. There's no explanation or reasoning behind it. it just, it's just how the algorithm is built, and that's how people consume content. And so that was our gap three years ago, and now almost everyone has jumped on it. Everyone's trying. Everyone's doing it here. I mean, in the U.S., it was big already. This is when those small girls started dancing on TikTok and those trends were going on. But now it's become com very saturated comparatively mm. than before. But do you think it's the algorithm or do you think that the consumer, the message behind a low quality content w will be, will give a different message than a high quality content? So I've seen both go viral. Um, and in fact, one of the most famous videos on TikTok by Zach, that guy who does all these uh, illusions is 2 billion views is a professionally shot video. So the algorithm is just a broker. It's the people that are consuming. Mm -hmm. And if you look at just our generation, our uh, population of the UAE, whatever they will consume is what the algorithm will promote. And for some reason, um, our audience enjoyed this type of content. God knows why. Uh, they enjoy how much do you pay for rent or they enjoy these small, what do you do for a living or, you know, just the dance. They enjoy this content. And so if they are consuming this, that's how the algorithm is going to reward you. Mm. And if you're going to spend maybe an hour or two getting the right lighting, the right picture, the right video, they don't care about it. 
the algorithm is not going to award you. Yeah, I always um, link it to the fact that um, 100 years ago, when they started the media, which is, it was literally newspapers, it was uh, radio, and then TV, and it was do- only done by professionals. Yeah. So whoever controls the media and has the capability to produce content is like a professional who knows how to run a cam- camera and, yeah. and, and produce advertised uh, content. So for the last 100 years, they were in control, creating content that uh, uh, consumer can see, yeah. but the end, uh, after seeing that high quality content, he needs to go and buy whatever they are pushing through that. Yeah. So as a as a consumer, I'm getting tricked every time I watch a high content, high quality content. Yeah. Every time I see something nice, I have to buy a product. Right. Because it's pushed through a, like a, also there is a star behind it or a model, polished image. There is always, you know, an agenda. So so now when social media started and, and phone gets better and people start, start to own, create their own content, they start to avoid, uh, um, you know, looking at these image, uh, videos that's high quality. No, there is something behind it. There is always, adver- you're trying to sell yeah. me something. See, um, it's like, uh, I use this analogy a lot. A cockroach, when you use piff paff on it, it'll die. But then the next breed of cockroaches will be resistant to that. And this piff paff is the content or traditional media, right? And so we as a human species got resistant to commercials. We got resistant to ways of selling. And then this is the new way of selling right now. You market yourself and then through you, you sell the product or the service. But this will also saturate. Mm. This will reach its point as well, where people will be able to tell the difference between someone who's only creating content to sell or someone who genuinely cares about the content. And you see a lot of it now. Like now, in today's world, not everyone can turn on the camera and go viral as easily as they could three years ago because people have gotten used to content. And the more they scroll, the more they need that dopamine hit. So if if I'm a real estate broker three years ago, I could easily go viral by posting a simple video about a property. Today, everyone is doing it, so I'm not going to have the same chance. So yeah, you have to keep evolving. You have to keep adapting. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, I'm at the, right at the beginning. So it's very interesting to see what's going to happen next. Yeah, I mean, um, how do you know you're right, right at the beginning? I mean, your, your videos is, are going viral because you have something to say and it's it's natural and it's fun. Um, but you said that they are getting used to this. Yeah. So how... What do you do so you don't repeat yourself? So uh, f- four years ago when I jumped on, t- or like three years ago, when I jumped onto TikTok, before that I had experience with Twitter and Snapchat, creating random small videos, uh, which had no meaning behind it. This is nothing to do with podcasts at that time. And what I saw was that if three or four regular viewers or followers were engaging with my stuff, they would create some sort of a small uh, tree diagram. Mm -hmm. Follower number one, two, and three have their own followers that start engaging with your content. So on Twitter, that was how I went viral for the first time in my life. I got 10 retweets together in an hour that became uh, over the next four days into 50,000 retweets. And I was like, wow, what is this? So this was the first time I understood that. Came on to TikTok, it was even faster. It was like, uh, I don't know, someone who's on steroids trying to become muscular, you know? Um, And very fast in the next uh, 12 months, I realized what I wanted to create was some sort of satire, some sort of sarcasm. And Gary Vee was very, very famous at that point. And so I started making fun of him. (laughs) I did that for uh, seven months before it reached the stage where I couldn't create that content anymore because I don't know what to say. And I also fell for the comments and the engagement, like uh, stop repeating the videos. You're doing the same thing over and over again. I shouldn't have done that because if I went further deep into that, I would have created another evolution of that content. So the podcast came out of making fun of Gary Vee. 
because I saw there are so many financial um, entrepreneurs and all of these gurus sitting online saying the exact same thing. So I was like, okay, how can I compete with these established people on podcast? Make fun of them. <laughs> um, and back then, it wasn't even the way it is today. Today, it makes sense when you listen to it. Like there's some logic or reasoning behind it, even though it's illogical. And I was just saying like, uh, I don't know, I was saying gibberish at some point. And I kept doing that. And people started liking that. Nobody said it was repetitive because it was different from the last seven months. And again, I started going into the same trap of people going like, hey, you're repeating the same type of content. But this time I didn't listen. I kept pushing the envelope. I was like, no, there's something over here. And I saw literally it went like this. It was falling down and then it boomed. So you need to find something which is true to you and then go all out. Shark Tank, America's Got Talent, uh, reality shows, it's the same structure. Coca-Cola is the same drink. They didn't come up with like, okay, they've got Coke, diet, and all of these, but mm -hmm. at the core, it's the same principle. So I can take this structure of podcast content that I'm doing, and I can do a million things with it if I think really hard enough into it. It's just how true it is. If it's not true to me, I will give up. Yeah, it's true. And uh, if you think about it, it's it's also a personality. Yeah. So you, you're you're creating your own personality, putting putting it uh, within a con uh, a content. And how many personality you can do is just like ma mainly one. Yeah. So if it's you saying the thing and the content, it can change, but still it will have the in core the same personality. And uh, that, that you can find it also in with, with actors. Yeah. You know, they have kind of one line yeah. that made them so famous, and they kept using that f like uh, throughout all their careers. They change, but S singers with one song. Yeah, you know, yeah, you were one saying. style, yeah. one style. I mean, it can be different content, but just the style is there. <laughs> Look, we complicated it ourselves. Hmm. People have this expectation that, you know, you should be different. I I believe in being simple. iPhone has been selling us the same shit the last 10 years and we're still buying it. People are complaining the new iPhone is not good and it's breaking apart. They're still selling, you know, they're still buying. Uh, we as a, a species try to simplify everything. So why should I do anything, do any different when it comes to my content? Like if I enjoy researching and finding weird facts and putting them out there and people a certain amount of population enjoys that and it's not even dubai anymore it's across the globe people have me commenting and sending me ideas for my next video so 100 percent, i'm going to try different stuff because i'm not going to be satisfied with this for the rest of my life but that weird sarcasm and satire is always going to follow we are as a human being um i find i find it out throughout my career when when i was creating content i mean all my career i've been creating content before social media because we do advertising content yeah. and then when the uh, dynamic has changed and um, social media started um, most of the agencies they came and said it started with gifs is if you want like we were doing like high end videos cinematic yeah. but then they said we want gifs and GIF for me is like silly, you know, it's just like things are jumping and yeah. it's jiffing and then yeah. a cup is moving. It's like boomerang kind of stuff. Yeah. So it was like, what? I mean, are we going to that uh, to that level? I mean, for me, it's like really simple. It's too easy. It's too easy. It's simple. It's just like, uh, um, and who whoever is creating it is like really young generation who came into the agencies and they are very happy. I was like not happy doing it, you know. Because I wanted something challenging uh, with more, uh, with more, you know, like big cameras and um, with something which presents a challenge. Yeah, exactly. More hard technically, but this was so simple, you know. But then I, because I always think you should not stuck in one uh, area. You know, you should like especially listen to the young generation, see what they have, and I find out. Okay, but we are as a human being. We are simple. We laugh at somebody f fall down or or, or yeah. a fart or whatever. Yeah. We are we are silly. We are simple. Yeah. The image that we created in the media is 
is not the real image that we have as a human being. True. What we watch, what we like to watch, we like to watch dogs, cats, uh, drama, some drama, fighting. something funny, yeah. you know. And this was not introduced in the content at that time. So I was like, no, maybe I should look at this in a different way, and it can, it can develop. That's the start of it. It just it looks silly now, but it will develop and it will be creative. And actually, this is what happening, you know. Now yeah. the dynamic is so creative, and and creativity is actually taking the lead of the production. It's not anymore how high res is your photo nobody yeah. asks you Ali, which yeah. how many megapixels is your camera that was the used to be the 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 main question how 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 big is the lens yeah how far you can get the image closer to you but it's just uh, now it's more how creative you can be how creative you can be but if you see especially in our region i'll say this again people are not creative here uh from the consumer to the creators at least what I've seen or what the creators before me, they have taken, either they've copied the vest, mm. like ripped apart. Like they've taken, if you have Shark Tank, which is the US version, you have Arab Tank coming on or Bollywood is inspired from Hollywood. Creativity, I feel in our culture was not promoted since our ancestors. Like we had paintings, we had art, we had algebra, but we didn't have film media entertainment in that sense the way the u.s promoted it and that is something i i'm seeing now people are more interested in it. the newer generation wants to do this but you still have parents pushing their kids towards engineering doctor or all of that stuff uh, which is the traditional way of making money but it's changed today today you could have an iphone and you could be making equivalent or more to an engineer or to a doctor doctors are doing social media today to keep up with their work because if you're not if you're a doctor with 10 years of experience but nobody knows you on social media you rely to your existing patients and word of mouth but if you're a fresh young doctor with a million followers on instagram and tiktok celebrities are going to start working with you you're going to show up on the news channels people are going to want to interview you, so on and so forth so much opportunity you can start your own line of medicine you i don't know man there, mm. there's so much happening yeah so yeah we can be creative if we embrace our uh, culture our um, you know if we believe that whatever uh, arabic culture or indian or yeah. pakistani or or whatever you see in your neighborhood is something yeah. if you believe that the authenticity of that thing can be anything good any art you can bring anything from that yeah and not to always say um creativity comes from hollywood or or um, or only uh, fashion come from europe yeah which is until now it the is case, true the, the case, case yeah. but if once you embrace what you have and this is what's happening if, yeah. if if you look at like the fashion you see that okay even the big brands are coming back to the region here and yeah. trying to see, you know, the, the culture is nice. There's just, we need to tweak here and there and just put it with a, with the right guideline or right, um, you know, content. It's nice. And and the social media had opened that. Uh, sure. You can see it. Like you can see it in Saudi Arabia what's happening. Like yeah. the guys and the f they are funny and they are, you know, and the content, they are doing it and yeah. embracing what they have. Yeah even here and or anybody in, you know it's just like it it's really just it's a raw thing so you don't look at it and compare it to a to a brand yeah. in europe or, or to a movie in in usa you just like start with it there's a shift because mm -hmm. there's a market for it there's demand now there's people who are on tiktok like we didn't have these many people giving importance to content uh 10 10 15 years ago social media was facebook or twitter Instagram for pictures. That's it. So now because there is this medium where everyone is scrolling, CEOs are scrolling, um, you know, big people, old people, young people, everyone's on the app. So there is this empty, you know, big void of uh, content creation, which we need to fill. And that's why some people really excel, even with the simplest of stuff. Uh, I mean, my, my content doesn't work in the gcc obviously it's english i have 
Dubai and uh, UAE maybe as my third or fourth in my analytics now. My content goes all the way to South Africa, US, Canada, Germany, because that's their humor. And this is what the algorithm is, again, really good at finding who engages with your content. But I'm really looking forward to how the content creators of GCC are going to take over. Yeah, it's it's uh, they're going to take over in the in the region um, because the content now is uh, something that needs to come from the individual. Yeah and not being uh, created by a big corporation and spread all over the countries. It's not going to work like this. Wherever it should be relatable, wherever uh, a brand uh, needs to address um, uh, any content uh, then and, and it needs to, th- to be successful, it has to come from the region, from, from individuals who have actually started their own content and and it's it's very relatable to the to the region around them brands are also playing a huge role in this because if there's no money on the table behind content people aren't going to be motivated tiktok doesn't pay you for a hundred thousand or million mm. views youtube is the only place where you can actually monetize but to put real food on the table brands need to support these creators and now brands are understanding like before the conversation three, four years ago, just recently, the conversation with the brand about content has changed completely. They are so much more open to, you know, okay, we're we're ready to try this type of content. Like I did that same podcast video with Sean for McDonald's. And that's a huge brand that understood our type of humor. So now other businesses in the market are like, okay, this works. This is interesting. This is not directly pushing or directly advertising, but they're supporting these creators. Mm. I mean, they uh, they were forced to, yeah. to do it. By uh, this is where the attention is, and um, and they are following that. But back to TikTok a little bit. Uh, don't you think from when TikTok started, they were they were giving a fake fame to everyone in a way that whatever you put, I I opened just a, a supplementary account, just an account, so I don't. Look yeah. at people from my account. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then the moment I posted something, and it was nothing. It was just a picture of a car. I get 500 uh, views because it, it was a video. This... Like 500 views from a zero account. Yeah. Yeah. So this is debatable. Mm. I, I'm not sitting behind the app. A lot of people uh, claimed and there were rumors that there are farms in China bot farms that are just sitting and replaying videos um you know these views are bought or they're fake and i even saw once i saw with my own eyes that you can with the click of a button get thousand views in a second but that existed on instagram as well and you can never tell for sure you can never tell that on this piece of content did i get a real one million views but um there is a flip side to it at the beginning when TikTok came over here, when people started downloading the app, there weren't that many people who were posting. What content? The content we were getting was either US content or neighboring region contents from people who are creating videos. So the algorithm has to find views for your content in order for the app to succeed. So it kind of does make sense that you could post anything and it would get 500 to 2000 views three years ago when there's not that much supply Hmm. because the algorithm was hungry and looking for these views. Compare that to today, there's maybe thousands or tens or 50, hundreds and thousands of creators just here in this region that are posting regularly, uh, out of which 50,000 must be brokers. who are looking for those views. So the algorithm is no longer desperate to award you, mm-hmm. you know? So with that reasoning, with that logic, maybe the views were real. Maybe people, 500 people did see your, cause I experienced the exact same thing. I could post a random video from my gallery in three hours, it's on 30,000 views. Mm. How, I don't know. There's no reasoning behind it. But now today I can't do that. It's impossible. Like if I post a content which is not relevant to what I'm doing right now, it's going to, considerably drop in views it's not going to react the same way the algorithm is smarter now Mm -hmm. in understanding content i want to talk about podcast yeah um because i started podcast like three years ago yeah 
when when corona started and my work stopped and everybody's work stopped and i was thinking okay what what can i do now so i was like you know just uh, let's have interview i know a lot of people and it was just for fun and it became by time it, it became something that uh, means a lot to me and it's working and uh, it's something serious yeah um but the rise of podcasts which is like now a lot of people are doing podcasts one why do you think this is happening is this is is there that much of audience or is it the trend how long do you think this is gonna go and how many is gonna stop or whatever so what, your opinion uh yeah when you said you started in corona this is around the time a lot of people had free time and they were experimenting not many people were doing podcasts during that time if i'm mm. not mistaken very few people podcast in itself as a structure is very difficult you want to sit down with someone for an hour you want to get information and you want to uh, explain that information or you have the right questions um keep it interesting for you you're looking at two people talking for an hour long or more even in some some cases it's not that easy but because of all these short form platforms you can make snippets and they can go viral and then they bring in the traffic so i think a lot of people saw that in since corona till now a lot of people saw these small clips of podcasts going viral andrew tate was also a huge push to this uh, podcast culture i feel because a lot of his videos that went viral were podcast clips mm. him sitting in a room with a mic him in another podcast him in an interview and this whole generation of young masculine teenager boys that saw that content were also like wow they were extremely impressed mm -hmm. and there's actually a name behind they call it the andrew tate formula where you shoot one hour worth of podcast content and you cut up clips and you post it through different platforms trying to get reach i think it's definitely a trend that everyone is start starting a podcast right now and um it's not going to survive like every trend dies off this is going to die off as well because it requires a lot of work i mean look at joe rogan this guy still up uploads one long podcast every i don't know week or i don't see how consistently up two or three times a week two or three times mm. a week and he's been doing that for how many years 10 yeah. years yeah he doesn't give a shit if it if people he's now like doing for the 4000 i think uh, episode imagine 4000 days if people listen to him or mm. not he doesn't care mm. he's on a journey he's going to keep walking till he dies that's him we're going to remember joe rogan as probably as the father of podcast mm -hmm. for the new young generations to come so there's going to be always one out of like billions that come out like that who are actually successful now from these thousands of podcasters that we see today that they go viral with one clip either they don't even have a infrastructure for podcast they're renting a studio and they're shooting their clips and they're just shooting those small clips because that's what i do for my videos mm. i will rent a studio or i will create a diy setup at my house with my camera i will spend 15 to 20 minutes filming a snippet my whole objective is to make that snippet to make people think that i have a podcast so i'm actually attacking these people who <laughs> who are uh so called podcasters but um authenticity will prevail and the ones who are actually doing this for education for a real purpose mm -hmm. will succeed one way or the other because there's always going to be a consumer for good content in podcast and you see people coming up still like consistently posting consistently creating good content you put in a work into anything it works mm -hmm. but also how much it's affecting the 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 content itself cuz uh, is most of the podcast is either motivational and that kind of deep yeah. you know just uh, wake up early run and work and 24 hours and hard work and it's repeating all the time that motivational talk and uh, mental health yeah uh, a few topics is like uh, i don't know relationships but, yeah business advice uh, i think it's again back to the audience right mm. unfortunately our audience enjoys these topics this is all they enjoy so as long as you feed into that 
it's going to work. I, I literally tested this. I tested this with a couple of my clients where I use the exact same topic, the exact same uh, speech. Like you said, you know, the motivation stuff, it mm -hmm. repeats. It went viral to the point where people started, like it caused a lot of controversy. And maybe you've seen this clip. It's between me and my business partner, Majdi, where he was like, Dubai is the easiest place to become a millionaire. Uh, oh my God, the amount of people that were, people were like, are you stupid? You know, do you even know what you're talking about? Are you even a millionaire? What they didn't realize is we just, we were testing what works. We've seen the exact same speech said by a million, like thousands of the creators. We're just seeing if it works. It works. And it works <laughs> because of you guys. Because you don't understand the difference between a joke or what's being said in a serious manner or who's a real content creator, you know? So it's working and it will keep working till people allow it to happen. Yeah, I think, but people are kind of either getting fed up. I, yeah. I can see it, like people are, you know, it's enough. Yeah. And uh, or get, like there's no not much enough information. I can't say they get enough from the information, but they're going to get enough from the fake kind of yeah. like uh, not authentic uh, uh, sources of uh, information. I'll tell you, you bring, I don't know, a mechanic who's worked uh, for 20 years in the UAE auto market, Put him in a podcast, he's going to become the most successful podcaster about spare parts, about repairing cars in the UAE immediately because he has that much experience to speak about. Mm. What do these other podcasters have to speak about? What they've copied from other people. And by the way, these motivational videos of podcast clips that have gone viral, I've seen Steve Harvey, I've seen some other people. It's usually really old or really experienced people who first go viral on that topic mm -hmm. and then everyone else copies it's that copying them yeah you know mm -hmm. so people with experience uh can easily excel within this space because you look at them and you know they're speaking from their experience a good example is tofik he's one of my clients tofik Reidi, for brands for less co-founder mm -hmm. of brands for less yeah he has said the exact same thing which other people have copied him and it doesn't go viral because when you see Tufik, you see a backing and proof of concept like what he's speaking about it's true he can stand by it but other people just say it for the sake of it mm -hmm. it shows on your face and people are very very fast to understand when a guy is lying or he's acting and that's why not everyone can be a professional actor that's why there are very few Shah Rukh Khan Tom Cruise you know Muhammad Ramadan, not everyone can be these actors because it takes a lot of skill to uh, create this deception that what I'm saying, I mean it. Fahad, tell me more about you. Oh, when, I mean, you're born in Dubai? Yes, I've been born and raised in the UAE. Yeah. I'm a Sharjah, Sharjah kid. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was, I did schooling in uh, Kasais in Dubai Scholars, and I went to American University, University of Sharjah. I was trying to become an electrical engineer. Um, man, worst experience in <laughs> AUS, <laughs> never recommending anyone who's trying to do, uh, engineering and they don't understand or they don't, uh, enjoy studying mm. because American University of Sharjah is all about quizzes, midterms, back to back. Um, I lost my scholarship in the first semester, sec second semester itself. So I had to drop out because the fees is enough. Like if either you pay that fees or you buy an apartment in Dubai. Oh, wow. It's 100K a year, so your installments will run faster and you'll actually make money back on a real estate mm. investment rather than the degree. I took a gap year for a year. I was doing a lot of part-time jobs since um, I was 17. I got into the field of Dubai. Because if you have your visa from your father, you have a lot of opportunities. A lot of companies and a lot of uh, events allow you to work on an NOC easily. It's not a big problem. Mm. So I started networking at a small age. I saw that my father's business was not doing well. Uh, I have to make my own money if I want to buy something. You know, if I want to get a driver's license, if I want to do this. And also, like, it's fun. Like, instead of sitting at home, you hang out. You get to be outside the house for a noble reason. Otherwise, your mother is going to be shouting at you. You're wasting time outside. No, I'm working. How are they going to <laughs> get upset at you if you're outside working, yeah. you know? So it was like two birds, one stone. Got back into uh, Rochester Institute of Technology in uh, Silicon Oasis. Again, restarted electrical engineering while I was still doing multiple various jobs on the side. 
Um, and now this time I was paying a percentage of my fees and that would hurt me a lot mm. because because <laughs> you're, you're working. I'm working. Yeah. And I'm paying. Exactly. And, and then I go home, I open YouTube, I study the same thing. What is this like, you know, and then I and then I get grades and then I have to go and do the assignment and then I have to work. And I didn't have anything against uh, what I like. I enjoy engineering since a kid. I wanted to build stuff. But what they were teaching me in college was theory and very less practical practical i wanted to uh, build a robot and i have to wait till the fourth year graduate and do my masters to build a robot i want to build a robot today tell me what it takes to build a robot no it's not possible you need to know how to do coding you need to know how to do this i mean i wasn't against anyone mm. i was happy i was like okay i'm gonna learn this but it became more and more difficult like you know the 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 current of the ocean was against me uh i remember i had this interview with someone and that person opened my eyes in the interview. And he goes like, why are you studying electrical engineering? It's like, I want to be like Tony Stark. I want to make robots. He's like, you can hire a technician. You can hire a person to code. What's the real reason? I was like, I didn't know what to say. And so I thought about it. I dropped out that same week. Wow. Uh, my parent, my mother wanted to kill me. My father was a little supportive because he knew I was paying part of it. So, <laughs> I yeah, but this is, you said something very, very important that w when you felt like because you started to work and paying part yeah. of the fees, you start to analyze whether what, whatever you're doing is yeah. makes sense or effective versus uh, the, the, the money I'm putting. Yeah. And is there a better way to yeah. learn the same thing somewhere else or faster, more efficient way? Students are not thinking this way. Mm, because their father are, are paying and they he's like just relax and, and actually going to the university for different reasons. Of course. You know. The social life, mm -hmm. the networking life. No, man. Um what I saw in the last I, I spent a good four, three and a half years between two universities and and the last time, I, the last batch I was in, the people were two years younger than me because I had to repeat a year as well. And I saw that this is a, one of the ways that you can succeed in life, which is through this. But there are so many other ways. If you go to a company in Business Bay or Barsha Tecom and you tell them, I can bring you 50 to 100,000 dirhams in sales every month. Just give me commission and a car. And you prove to them in your first month. Trust me, a person with high CGPA and, you know, a lot of good grades on their uh, CV he has no value in front, of, mm -hmm. in front of you. The business owner only cares about sales, profit, profit yeah. and what's going to keep the uh, ball moving. And I learned that. I learned that working with corporate companies at a very young age. I saw that a lot of the people on senior positions don't even have the same education. It's either Vasta or they've been in the company for a long time. So they've been promoted to that position. A lot of the things that we're told is a lie. So I was fast to act. I dropped out and somehow, you know, like the universe was in my favor. COVID hit. So anyways, everything went on hold for everyone. I was selling hand sanitizers during uh, the lockdown. I would go from uh, supermarket to supermarket with my friends we would you know go in different cars we would load this we had my father's uh, trading company mm -hmm. so he had stock from his supplier and we would literally supply to neighboring supermarkets i went all the way to abu dhabi getting because people were paying cash and you were able to sell a good amount of quantity because no one was supplying in the market everything was shut down and um, i mean around the same time i was also working in another company for media and I saw a lot of corruption in the world of media. There, there was a lot of problems like businesses were ready to pay 15,000 dirhams for an influencer who will maybe uh, bring one call to your business for a simple story, Snapchat story, you know. And I witnessed that because I would bring a customer in and then he would get this as a service and the outcome was dust, nothing. Mm. And I don't come from a media background, but I came from a sales background. And so in sales, every credibility is everything. If a customer is happy working with you once, he's going to follow you to whatever you, you bring him. Like, it's simple. I'm not going to go and work with someone else if you're taking care of me. And I, I really wanted to take care of my clients. Um, long story short, I ended up leaving the company and 
I got approached by one of the clients, why don't you come and do TikToks for us? And this is 2020, October. I'm like, what are you talking about? Nobody uh, uses TikTok for businesses. They're like, no, just come and make some videos for us. Uh, see how it goes. I was like, sure, I'm anyways resigning. I don't have anything else. Um, I dropped out of college, you know. <laughs> this will be a good opportunity. And I was already experimenting with my own content on the side. One month passes and I create a video every day. I would wake up, go to work 10 o'clock, make one video, come back home. That was my job. It was a freelancing job. Uh, I was getting paid 2500 I still remember. I was like, if I can live life like this for the rest of my life, it's amazing. Oh. <laughs> 2500 work one hour a day. Wow, amazing. <laughs> no responsibility except this one TikTok. How I was mistaken. <laughs> the 27th day, I remember the video went viral. Again, no reason why it went viral. It just went viral. It got 6 million and became 7, 7.7 7 million views. And uh, the guy was like, wow, how did mm. this happen? And I'm like, I have no idea how this happened. It just happened. And then he referred me to another client. And that's when I called up my partner, Majdi. He was working in another engineering company. So he graduated. Uh, and I'm like, bro, I don't speak Arabic. And I think there is a good chance to do something different here in the market. And he was, he was getting a good, decent salary. His life is settled. And he listens to me and he goes like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Like, I will do this on the side. And so he starts helping me with another client. Those two become four, become six, become 10. In just three months, he gave his resignation. And K9 unit was born in a few months after that. And the rest is history. I mean, we've been around for a while now. And it's been, it's been a very interesting journey because mm. we have seen so much Still, like you learn every day when you work with different businesses, just just because you have a big client doesn't mean your life is good, mm. you know, and or just because you have small clients doesn't mean your life is horrible. It's the complete opposite of what they tell you. you know? Yeah, but Fahad, uh, how, how much of this story, which is amazing, uh, it's applicable to many people? Very, I, I think maybe no one. Okay, it's good you said that. I, I, it's impossible that mm. the same um, steps would work for someone else mm. because it's probability and they have to be able to go through the same experiences that I went. They have to think the way I thought. They have to be given the same opportunities I was given. If someone is coming from outside of the UAE to apply for a job or to start a social media company and they don't have their own visa, they don't have capital to support them, not gonna work i meant also because there's a lot of successful story which which came out from making content yeah. youtube leaving the university working hard yeah hustling and and then su succeeding in a way and being a millionaire yeah and which usually get promoted and this how much this is gonna affect some kids or generation that it's affecting it in affecting in a very wrong way mm. i believe a lot of people think that I can drop out of college, I can drop out of university, and I, I can grab my phone and boom, I'm going to succeed. If you do not have real experience of the corporate world, you're going to get crushed. Unfortunately, that's the truth of it. I had some experience during my schooling, during my college time, that I worked in some really tough jobs, in some really tough and toxic environments. Same thing applies to my partner. And so that when, when we got together, and we started this business, we pulled through. And even today, it's not easy. It's still, there are challenges. Someone coming fresh out of college who has been waking up, going to college, coming back home and just dealing with school, assignments, university is going to not survive in a market because a market is ruthless. A market is built on the basis of, I need to make money from whatever you're offering me. And if I don't get that, thank you. You're the first one that they're gonna cut off. My message to the young generation who is studying, who is uh, trying different things is uh, research, intern, apply like work for free in your age. And, and in this day, if you have a house, you have water, food and transport, man, uh, you are the most lucky and privileged person out of the whole population because you have what people don't have 
in the future. Next next three years, people don't have that. Five years, people don't have that. They're not dependent on, they don't have anyone to depend on. So I would say it's almost like a cheat code. Use this time to experience and experiment and work for free, get abused, no problem. Allow them to- uh, Use you. Use you. Mm, just get the experience. Get the experience, get the connections, get on the good side of certain key people and those people will bring you forward with you. As simple as that. But don't drop out and like I dropped out and I did what I did on very calculated risks. I decided to drop out at a time where I saw that my parents will not be able to pay my fees and I can maybe figure something out myself. And it was a huge ris risk, but I had five years of work experience backing me. If this didn't work out, I could have got a sales job. I could have done this. I could have done a decent living in something or the other. I was ready to work no matter what mm. the job was. But I did that based on some backing. I didn't just blindly jump into a swimming pool mm. without knowing how to swim. I knew how to navigate the waters. I had a driver's license. I had connections in the market. I had spent my time in the market. But yeah, the the, the narrative that you should drop out of college and start your own business mm. is very famous. Everyone pushes it's it. Very famous, especially in the crypto world as well. Ah. I mean, it's just <laughs> overrated and like... Yeah, you can sell, you can trade and day trading and you can make a lot of money. Yeah. Man, um, as our fathers and our ancestors have said, and even today I will say the same thing, whatever comes fast, goes fast. You know, uh, there is no... You know, if you're not benefiting the community around you, if you're not, people are not making money or not benefiting from you, there it's going to swallow you very fast. You can't just be the winner alone. Mm -hmm. People have to win with you. And that's how big companies are formed. Uh, and that's what I'm realizing now also. It's not a one-man show. Just because you got the right uh bitcoin at the right time and you made you know thousands of dollars under a okay what are you going to do that money is going to run out someday or the other you're if you get it i mean if you're lucky to yeah. to, to to make it as well yeah. and how many hours do you work uh, for him? uh i never counted <laughs> see i mean this is something that people <laughs> yeah. should know also that uh, we've been talking about the podcast before we started and as a as like I have a I have another business yeah. that it's actually I'm feeding, work, it, yeah. feeding it and I'm I, I'm I'm working hard to keep things together you know it's it's like life is not Fahad is not just what yeah this uh, five seconds or or one minute that you see on TikTok there is a lot of hours behind everything the the five seconds the fifteen seconds that I make I'm making it either at one a.m. or three p.m. during my lunchtime whenever I get the time, but around the clock, I am surviving. I'm doing something or the other, speaking to clients, shooting, planning. Even if I'm dreaming, I'm thinking of something to do. In fact, I remember like now if I get sick and I'm not allowed, like not able to work, you can't that's afford scary. getting sick. That's scary. Mm. I'm going to lose money. <laughs> Uh, not doing something. I have rent to pay. I have salaries to take care of. The responsibility is even greater now. I have a family, my own family I have to look after. So, uh, but that's 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 life, mm. you know, and you have to accept it. Tell me how did you meet Sean? I mean, you as a, as a like a Dio, uh, I don't know if I want to call it Dio or not, but you, you became famous together. Yeah. And this guy is like amazing. So, Sean and I were in the same company, in the same media company at the same time. He came, uh, like I would say, six months later mm. after I came. Some people, sorry to interrupt you, some people knows him as uh, my parents are divorced. My parents are divorced, mm. that's right. His parents are actually divorced. <laughs> and divorced. Yeah. So um, he was also just, he was working, he was doing sales. We had, um, I would say, exchange of words just on on an occasion and we were like okay i just told him you know what let's try making a video together because i saw he had done some stuff on his page and that's how you that's how the universe puts you with people together if you're doing something and someone else is on the same path you're going to meet with them so he agreed he had no uh resistance to you know what i was what i was saying and we made our first infamous video of us dancing together and then we just parted ways like he went his own way he he was working in his own thing i was working in my own thing 
But somehow, you know, I have this habit of keeping relations with people that I click with. So Sean was one of those very few people that I really enjoyed spending time with. And I was that oh, I would always meet him. I would go over to his house on the weekend and he kind of slowed down in between. He wasn't that active. And I was like, man, you're funny. Put this stuff out there. And then I around the time I was doing my podcast, I started pushing him into that series. And so his podcast series was born from that. And he's he's a genius when it comes to improvising. He's a genius when it comes to accents. And I've just kind of worked with him to build something or the other out of his genius because I enjoy it. I enjoy the process. I enjoy spending time with him. And mashallah, as you can see, he <laughs> yes. has done an amazing, fantastic I mean, great. job. All, uh, what, uh, like, there is a, a good, nice chemistry between you and him. Yeah. I mean, especially when you love, when you can't hold yourself yeah. and you love. Uh, That's real. When he's like saying something, which is amazing. Tell me how um, isn't that concerning came out? So isn't that concerning? Like I said, you know, there was this whole trial and error with the podcast. Mm. It was climbing and then it was declining again. Uh, along those hundreds of videos that I made, I said, isn't that concerning in one of them? I don't recall which, I mean, I would have to sit down and scroll back and find that video. And I said it unintentionally because what I would say kind of does bring a concerning matter out and it just came out of my mouth. And then I saw that a couple of people were commenting, isn't that concerning? As, and people were relaying that to me. And so I started saying it more because that's a signal from the audience that they enjoy it mm. when you say that. And eventually it reached the stage where if I don't say, isn't that concerning, that becomes concerning for the audience. And there's the, something missing. There's something missing. And so it's very similar to the, to the, even when I was doing the Gary V impressions and becoming a motivational speaker, there was this thing that I said about become a chair that became very famous and it was not planned. It was out of thin air and people picked on it. Same, just like that. Isn't that concerning was born because people picked on it. I just kept creating. I just enjoyed the process. And I'm sure just like that, if I keep creating something or the other people will pick on and, and then that becomes the next thing. But isn't that concerning has become very, very popular. Like there are other creators copying. I'm seeing it. There are different languages. I can't claim anything. Hmm. I mean, it's a free platform. This is how social media is unfortunately you know anyone but it is yours i mean you're the one who started it i i mean i would like to believe so but people can claim anything you know it's uh y you you don't have the rights to anything mm. in the world of content unless you're hollywood or you're some big uh, label you know what do you do for a living i don't know who's the first person who started uh, it again it's like uh, it's been copied a lot and people are yeah daniel it. daniel mack if i'm not mistaken mm. he was in uk or the us and he went to celebrities and he came up with it and then and then everybody's everyone using. everyone used it same thing with how much do you pay for rent yeah it got really popular in new york Again, it became extremely mm. popular around the world. So there's a reason these things work because people are simple. Yeah. They have the same uh, mentality. They have the same experiences to a certain degree. And so they can relate to this content. Like everyone pays rent or everyone does something for mm. a living, you know, and everyone can relate to something concerning. So it works. And as often you will find people arguing with each other in the comments as well on my videos like uh no what he's saying is right no what he's saying is wrong it's funny people are interesting yeah but it's just like how how much you can make a content that it's not concerning at all to yeah. be worried about yeah <laughs> and adding the word concerning next to it like who, nobody's concerned about two plus two is yeah. four you yeah. know <laughs> but if you say it in a way if two plus two equals four, but four might not, you know, the energy that I'm saying that mm, with, it's very serious. People start getting drawn into like, he's going to say something important. And then the release in the end is like, no, he was just wasting our time. That causes the watch time because they don't believe that I tricked them to that point. They, they don't want to accept it. 
and I've I've just abused that small uh, emotion that I'm able yeah. to recreate in the viewer as much as I can in many different formats of content as well. It's not just a podcast. I have a few other series where I do the exact same uh, emotion hmm. and it works. It works beautifully. And adding the character in front of you yes. is also another uh, nice part to, to, to the thing. I mean, the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these characters who are either shocked Yeah. how silly is that they look homeless they look <laughs> high they look um, they look like they're dead according to some people. i mean it's nice if you can bring like a big guy like a i don't know like a ceo of amar and in front of you and ask him the same thing eventually eventually that's the goal to collaborate with people who you know have a strong presence locally mm. internationally because they are they are yeah. also nice and and they like that human yeah. thing you know yeah. brands and uh, different businesses have literally reached out saying that they want to do this podcast where i do isn't that concerning and i'm like sure but i know that there is a benefit of creating your own presence in one any way or the other like tomorrow i get a job at starbucks if everything stops working for me i'm working at starbucks And I'm giving an order and I say, isn't that concerning? Or if I have something with my reach, or with my following, that is a benefit to the business. And I'm automatically in a better position to work in Starbucks mm -hmm. because of this following, because of this culture or this trend that ex exists around my name. So, yeah. You see all these people with Bugattis, especially I don't know why they bring Bugattis, the most expensive car. Yeah. But it's giving this message that um, I am rich, I'm successful, and I made it without school or without university. Uh, you've done the same route. Yeah. But you don't have the Bugatti. You see, just because you're dropping out of college and you are um, making a lot of money today doesn't mean you're successful. Your definition of success, if it's tied to making a lot of money, there's a big problem at core. My um, message to everyone who's watching this, if you are in college and you are studying something, don't study blindly. Try to do some more research and equip yourself with experience of the real world. Try to get into an internship in the same company where your dad is working or your mom is working. Try to research online and see what other people are doing. I mean, there are YouTube videos on videos on videos about ex different experiences, about different jobs, about different things you can do. Or just educate yourself with a new skill. Because once you graduate out of that college, you are going to be no better than all the billions of students that have graduated because you are equal to them in one way or the other. And for the people that are dropping out of college and are saying that, you know, I've got a Bugatti or I have a Lamborghini and I've made so and so much money, 90% of them have rented it and it's not even theirs. And the others who actually have made it, it's good for them. But that doesn't mean you're going to do the same thing because life doesn't work in the exact same way for everyone. Just because one person jumped from the cliff and had a parachute and survived doesn't mean you're in the same boat, in the same exact scenario. So don't copy others and try to be like others. Try to be yourself. You've dropped out of school. You consider yourself from the 1% who made it successful. You consider yourself also a successful person. I would consider myself more happy than successful today. There is still a lot of work and a lot of things that I have to go through. So 100% I'm happy with the decision of dropping out because for me and in the way my life was going, this turned out to be the best case scenario. I don't know what it would have been if I continued studying, but to support my family and to support myself, this turned out to be a perfect route. So I do consider myself happy, but do I consider myself successful? No, tomorrow if my business shuts down, or if tomorrow for some reason content does not make the same type of money it's making for me today, I'm back to square one. 
So I will be successful when I have done enough experiences and I have tried enough things in my life and I have not given up in pursuing my dream. But right now I'm still in the journey of achieving that success. Mm. Right now I'm just happy and I love what I do. But you don't have a Bugatti. Isn't that concerning? That is extremely concerning. <laughs> Fahad, I don't know where are you from? I'm from Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean... You have the Asian, we call it Asian when we say Asian, Pakistan. Pakistan, India. Yeah. The but, uh, but the common thing I found is like you are from Dubai. I can see it. Yeah. I can feel it. Regardless, you're born in Dubai. I knew it before you said it. There is a common thing between kids who was born here or raised here and which is... Uh, I don't know, the culture, the business uh, mind. I, I think it's the mixed culture exposure that you get growing up in Dubai. I mean, there's this huge Pakistan, India, um, you know, heat and beef, so to say. I never felt that growing up here. In fact, 80% of my friends in school were Indians. Mm. I was surrounded with Indians. I understood their culture. They understood my culture. We ate their food. They ate our food. Um, there's so much cross-culture, um, you know, engagement happening over here. You you get to learn about different religion. You learn. You get to respect different people. So when you have that sort of exposure at a very young age, you're a completely different person compared to someone who is in a closed society, focused on only one. Um, I would say tradition, culture, again mm -hmm. religion. They don't have any understanding. I mean, of course you do. The internet is at your disposal, but it's a different thing when you grow up with those people around you. And then you get, the, of course, the Arab culture over here. A strong Western culture has also come in in the last 20 years. So, um, and of course, not to forget the opportunity the Dubai kids have. I mean, it's not just the real estate market and the entertainment or the tourism industry that has succeeded. The youth of Dubai is extremely powerful in my opinion uh, compared to the youth of different regions because you get the opportunity to try out and do everything and anything if you're in the legal age in this country in terms of productive work different jobs uh, you're you're basically at the beginning of a new country uh, you're this this is an emerging country mm. in the last 20 years and you're witnessing this growth firsthand Whereas in different parts of the world, these are established uh, nations from the last hundred years and so. So yeah. what, what do you see as a common thing that um, <clears throat> the new generation or Dubai kids will, will always, that's the most profession they're going to take, most uh, like a common thing between uh, a Dubai raised uh, person? I think a Dubai kid... For a Dubai kid, it's very normal for petrol to be delivered to your doorstep. For a Dubai kid, it's very normal to have everything on a click of a button and be very tech savvy because the country pushes that. This, Do you think this is a good thing for kids? I think there's a good and a bad to everything. Like as a kid growing up, if I have everything at my disposal and I don't have to work for anything, I can become spoiled. But on the flip side, I mean, I grew up in the same uh, country. I've been between Sharjah, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. I've been working across this entire country. And I didn't become, I would like to say, spoiled. I instead pursued more and I wanted to gain more from this um, country. So it's subjective. Just like the Internet has the pros and the cons of being so mm. accessible to the youth. Similarly, a culture and an environment the same as the UAE provides can have both positive and negative, depending on how the the youth takes it. But there is definitely a lot of opportunity in this part of the world than there is anywhere else, I mm. believe. The language is, is something that in common, like most Arabs will stop talking Arabic. And most, yeah. Uh, I, you didn't learn the Arabic here. I can read Arabic mm. because I'm Muslim. I can recite. I can uh, even understand to a certain degree. I can put words together. But because everyone spoke English, 
uh, even my Arab friends spoke English. Exactly. In fact, some Arab, friend, Arab friends spoke Urdu or Hindi growing up. I didn't need to speak Arabic, you know. It wasn't like if you're in Saudi or if you're in Qatar, it's the diff- it's a different situation. Mm. Like I've been to people, I've been with people over there. They speak fluent Arabic, like they they even have the dialect into them. Because yeah, they WhatsApp you in Arabic actually. Yeah, yeah, but over here it's the flip side. Everyone speaks English, and again that comes back to the ease of access to things. Great. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in ten years? Where do I see myself in ten years? I used to think that I'm going to become like uh, Tony Stark. I'm going to have my own building with 50 stories and my own robots and everything like that, a big corporation. But as of now, the the vision is that I am running a very big uh, campaign, which is pushing an industry to do something different than what it has been doing traditionally. And maybe that's in the world of content, or media, but definitely it's going to inspire a wave that is going to benefit as a community. Like maybe it's through content. Maybe I help build a marketplace for the next upcoming content creators. You know, maybe I help set the foundation for the youngsters that are behind me Mm. who are now going to start creating content and it's easier for them. Okay, I can just plug and play and I can start working because there is no foundation or groundwork done in this specific small niche of content that I'm in. You have to discover everything on your own. But that's the vision right now. Mm. I don't know where it will take me. Uh, You said that the marketing or most people do marketing in in a wrong way. They just create content and bring a photographer and uh, do the same thing and just push the content. Yeah. Um, Do you, are you afraid that... uh, social media one day is going to f- change um, dramatically into a different direction maybe chat gpt or or the ai kind of take over and and you f- you feel like whatever you have learned is going to go quickly and you need to adapt to something totally different when you look around you in today's industry the leaders of the previous market that adapted to this market are still the leaders of this market uh, some big names, for example, Gary V. Um, there are some content creators who were famous on YouTube or in the production world that adapted to this world. I can't remember their names right now. So I believe that even if there is a sudden shift, like a drastic shift in the market, where whatever I have learned for the last, by that time, maybe five years or seven years, is no longer relevant, if I can be humble enough to go back to day one, and start over then the experience that i have from this last seven years is automatically going to put me ahead of the game and i'm going to be again on a i would say i would have a a benefit or or an edge that others don't have Mm -hmm. of because it's going to be the same thing but in in a different language and i have to be humble enough to work with other people to work with people who understand that game so I'm not scared of a shift or a change. I think I have been born in a very uncomfortable, um, you know, circumstances. I've lived my entire life, so I'm not scared of not being comfortable. But what I am scared of is becoming comfortable and not having to challenge myself. That is something I would never want. Definitely. I mean, you said the right word. I, if I'm humble enough, or if I don't have the ego, yeah. Because usually this is what kills you: is the comfort zone and the ego. Yeah where you're stuck in the same place, I'm still doing enough, I'm, I'm happy, I'm a giant company, yeah. and I don't want to just, uh, you know, uh, believe of, what, of what's, the ch- what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Fahad, thanks for coming to my podcast. Thank you for mm-hmm. inviting me, and it was a pleasure. It, it's my pleasure. Uh, I'm happy to see you, and I'm happy for your success. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fahad. Thank you. Bye.